this is Tim with OT Customs again. Uh, excited today to talk to you about my custom Beskar Mandalorian conversions, show you some of the features on those figures, uh, as well as uh, some of my repaints that I will do on the standard sort of uh, chapter one and two uh, armor uh, design. And uh, yeah, I'd love to get into uh, talking about the figures. Before I do, I want to share that this figure that you see front and center, the one that I'll be uh, showing off to you today, uh, is actually going to be auctioned off on my eBay page, uh, and I will be sharing uh, a percentage of uh, the, the final sale price uh, with the Bail Project. I actually uh, have a degree in criminal justice, have been a lifelong Batman fan, as you know, uh, and uh, have, have always uh, had a deep caring for uh, how uh, our criminal justice system works. The more and more I learned about it, uh, the more messed up I, I began to find that it is. Um, our criminal justice system uh, is, is really focused on, on cracking down on, on crime within poverty uh, and, and tends to turn a blind eye towards uh, what you might call white collar crime. Uh, and that's why I'm excited about the Bail Project and their, their mission. Uh, so uh, to put it simply, uh, you know, I'm not a representative for the Bail Project. Um, so, you know, this is not an official statement from them, but what they're doing is uh, uh, they collect money to assist families uh, who are in need of posting bail. Uh, they can then recycle that money because once the, uh, the individuals show up for their court date, that, that money comes back to the bail project. They're able to use it for, for future uh, uh, candidates as well. Um, and then they're also advocating for bail reform. Um, some info from their website. Um, People in pretrial detention right now make up more than two-thirds of America's jail population. They are presumed innocent under the law, yet they will suffer the harms of incarceration unless they have enough money to pay bail and buy their freedom. This two-tier system criminalizes poverty and is a structural linchpin of mass incarceration and racial inequality. It affects entire communities, devastates families for generations, and guts the presumption of innocence. Now you can find that on their website. Uh, that is bailproject.org and to add some of my own thoughts to that if you're in a state of poverty if you're living paycheck by uh, paycheck to paycheck uh, and you uh, get charged with a crime under the law you're presumed innocent but if the judge says you have to post bail you could lose your job the job that you're depending on to pay bills because you don't have savings so if you're living in poverty you get arrested, even if you're innocent, it could still devastate your entire family's lives. Uh, you could lose your job because you've been in jail, unable to post bail, um, and then you know that could either uh, that could even further impact your ability to get jobs in the future too. So, my personal belief is that the bail system in the U.S. is is corrupt, and it focuses on on essentially penalizing people who are still presumed innocent because they're poor rather than because they've they've you know, been convicted of a crime. So that's why I'm passionate about what the Bail Project is doing, and that's why uh, I'm going to donate a portion of, of the proceeds from this auction uh, to the project. The listing will be up shortly after this video is posted. Um, feel free to take a look at it. You'll be able to see the percentage that, that's uh, being donated there. I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to do yet. Um, the reason I'm not don donating all of the proceeds from this auction today, uh, this business is still new for me. There's still some numbers that I'm trying to, to make work on my end. Once I get up and running, I would like to start doing an auction like this where 100% of the proceeds go to a charity of, of my choice. Um, if you have any more questions uh, or, or ideas, uh, if you want to learn more about the Bail Project, again, that's bailproject.org. Um, and uh, I'd be happy to share some more of my thoughts if you want to uh, reach out to me as well. So moving on, uh, I want to go ahead and talk about the figures that I have on display here. Now the four in the background are identical to the one up front. They all have the same features. Those are uh, uh, figures that have already been uh, sold uh, and they're going to uh, my customers they'll be shipping out uh, this week. Um, this is actually, uh, what you're seeing here is my last uh, full batch of uh, custom Beskar Mandalorians. I do have one more uh, that was supposed to be in this batch that I'm reworking. Uh, I, I plan to auction that one off as well uh, for now. Uh, these are the ones that I have finished. Um, big reason I'm not doing the conversions anymore, Hasbro's version will be out soon. Uh, uh, the Mafex and um, I think uh, SH Figure Arts may have made a, a Beskar version as well. 
Uh, those are going to start to release soon. Uh, so I think that going forward, there will be more value in repainting those if you choose than having this full conversion done. Uh, but still very proud of the work here and, and would love to kind of go over some of the details uh, of what I've accomplished with this conversion. So uh, to start off, just to give credit, uh, I have used two suppliers for some parts. Uh, these figures uh, feature parts that came from uh, Hasbro, obviously with the base figure, uh, and then the uh, chest piece, the shoulders, and the uh, jet packs all come from John Walker Customs. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, you can find him on Instagram. I think he has a YouTube as well. Uh, previously, I'd used some chess pieces from uh, Two Sons Customs as well, um, also on Instagram. Um, they uh, closed down for a little bit uh, due to the pandemic, so I wasn't able to get the chess pieces that I used before, uh, but I'm really happy with the way these ones from uh, John Walker Customs turned out. Um, and then everything else is done by me, so all of the sanding, painting, uh, finishing uh, the custom thigh pieces on the uh, figure's left thigh there. Those are all uh, done by hand uh, by me. Uh, I've adapted the shoulders to fit onto the figure uh, and the backpack has, has uh, a, a peg uh, attachment included. Uh, I have um, uh, changed the, the port for the gun to mount that so it mounts a little bit more easily on the back of the figure. Uh, and then everything has been repainted. Um, with the chrome finish being something that, that I really spent a lot of time trying to get right. So I have done three different versions of this paint job. Uh, the first one uh, was just silver paint. It was really dull. It looked more like a silver car than actual metal. Uh, and then I tried the chrome. I tried putting a little thin layer of silver over the chrome to just kind of tone it down. It still, it looks, it looks better, but it looks kind of like a, a, a uh, kind of like a MacBook, like that kind of anodized aluminum look. It wasn't quite right. Uh, and then my third attempt, I used chrome. I, I knocked it down with a tiny bit of black and then a uh, gloss clear coat over it to keep it durable. Uh, I think it captures that stainless or, or steel look perfectly. Uh, it, it's not as durable as your factory paint, but you can handle it, you can pose it. I have knocked over my own figures and dropped some parts on my own figures and they've been completely fine. So it is, it is as durable as something like you might find on a high-end figure, uh, you know, so you may not want to play with it like a genuine toy, uh, but any kind of handling, posing, the occasional falling over on the shelf, it's going to hold up to that just fine. Um, so that pretty much covers all of the finishes. Um, I think the only thing I might have missed, I, I have taken the uh, left uh, knee pad off and re-sculpted that with epoxy, uh, so it looks like it's just fabric because uh, for whatever reason he loses the knee pad uh, once he gets the best skirt uh, armor. So just to get into uh, the details, uh, I'll go ahead and start posing the figure, showing some of the features off. Um, the first thing I want to show is that I did actually make wired shoulder joints. So uh, the, the joint is, or the armor is attached by a wire that's posable. Uh, I did this for a few reasons, but, but the main one is just uh, if I glued it down, obviously you'd lose articulation. That's not ideal. Uh, if I attached it by kind of a flap on the top of the shoulder, when you try to move the arm up, you would get the problem of that kind of sliding. Or if you try to move the arm forward and up especially, then you'd have this shoulder pad sort of sticking up into the middle of the air. So I chose to attach it at the bicep by wire. Really lets you get any pose you want. You can lift to 90, and if it gets a little too close to the helmet, you can actually bend the wire back, pose it a little further out, so it looks kind of natural there. Uh, and then it'll look silly when you put it back down, but just sort of pinch it back up, and it looks normal. So, and then, you know, uh, like the example I just shared, uh, if you move the arm forwards, you can sort of repose that to where it looks kind of natural. Um, so, in my opinion, it's an ideal solution. Uh, full articulation and you can kind of relocate that pad to where you think it should naturally sit uh, in that pose, right? So um, that's for both shoulders. This shoulder is permanently attached by the wire. This one, uh, I made it swappable. Uh, so there's actually a peg attachment on the wire. Uh, still a little bit of blue tack on this shoulder, but you can see uh, you just insert this peg into the shoulder pad and then you still have the full articulation. It's pretty sturdy. Uh, 
you know, if it's posed, it's not really going to fall off, uh, but you do want to be careful with it. You know, you may knock it off in the process of posing it, uh, but that allows you to switch over to the Mudhorn Signet shoulder uh, to get that look that goes with the, the back, or the jet pack, I should say. Um, and as you'll see, the, all the ones in the back are wearing their Mudhorn, so they're kind of set up in that final appearance from, from the last episode where he's got the jet pack and, and the Mudhorn Signet. Um, yeah, and getting into the jetpack, uh, again, this is from John Walker Customs. Uh, I have modified it to attach by a peg. Uh, I felt that was more sturdy uh, than some of the other methods other people have come up with. And it allows you to securely get that to stick on the figure, even with the cape attached. Uh, and I'll get into the cape in a second, but uh, you can kind of push the cape around it. If you wanted to, you could cut a hole in your cape and, and place this through the cape, but I think it looks quite nice, kind of tucked over uh, to the side like that. Um, and then the cape itself, uh, this is my wired cape. All of my six inch capes include uh, what I call a folded collar. Um, not really sure a better term to call that, but essentially his cape appears to clasp over the right shoulder in the show. So I've created a sort of uh, tucked in fold there uh, that wraps around the leading edge. Uh, it's not 100% accurate, but I think it captures the look at the scale without being too bulky. Um, and gives you that look of, of the cape sort of wrapping around uh, the neck from the back. Uh, now this is my wired cape. All of my repaints and, and conversions come with a wired cape. Um, it's my sort of premium cape for the Mandalorian. Uh, lets you really get some dynamic posing. But I think still keeps a kind of nice uh, streamlined profile of the neck without being too bulky. Um, and this material, some may find it to be a little bit closer to a black color. Uh, in person, I can assure you, uh, compared to any black material, this will appear dark gray. Uh, I matched this up initially to the stock plastic cape that comes with it, so it has a little bit of a texture to it, uh, as well as that gray color. Um, and I think it uh, drapes really nicely, it holds up well, it won't fray. Uh, I do include some weathering, uh, some small uh, holes throughout, as well as um, little cuts on the trailing edge just to give it that weathered look that he has in the show. Um, then of course my thigh that is made here uh, and the knee joint uh, replaced uh, with sculpted detail to look like fabric there. Um, now I did paint everything on these figures. The back uh, is painted uh, to appear to be Beskar as well. I don't actually know if that's how it is on the real suit because you never really see the back armor. but. Uh, just wanted that to look uh, accurate uh, across all of the figure uh, and, ma and, and match. Uh, maybe not be accurate, but match, right? So um, now some of the details, uh, they may not stand out initially. I have repainted pretty much everything except for the boots, which just got a slight wash, uh, and the belt. Now I did repaint the belt to be more, uh, more precise, so there's some sloppy areas. Uh, so I repainted the brown on the belt to make it cleaner. Um, but um, the grays that you see here, as well as the browns on the torso, uh, the brown of the flight suit and the vest, or the gray of the flight suit and vest, uh, are all repainted colors that I've uh, custom mixed myself uh, to, to be authentic to the, to the actual screen used suit. Um, there's actually a slight difference in color on these sides uh, to the center here. You'll notice this is a little bit more uh, bluish, and this is more of a neutral gray. Um, and then I put a little tiny mist of black to add some weathering to those as well. Um, and that's pretty much everything. I did make the, uh, the welds on this as well. Uh, I just used super glue to build up some thickness and sort of make like two sort of jagged lumps there on the armor. Chromed half of it and then weathered uh, in, in black as well. Um, to get that accurate kind of repaired armor piece look from the show. Um, I think the last thing I haven't talked about uh, is the gun attachment, so I uh, have made some modifications to that. Whoops. Put this shoulder back on. Now if the shoulder ever gets loose and falls off a little bit like that, you can bend this portion that's coated in rubber uh, just so that it creates a little bit more friction and holds that on a little bit more securely. Um, but yeah, moving back on to uh, the gun. Now what I've done is just add some 
uh, depth to the stock hole. And you'll want to force this through the bandolier here. And that's not going anywhere. So the gun is unmodified. I've just adapted the, uh, the actual um, socket for it. Um, and uh, it stays on very securely now without having, having any kind of unnecessary complication. Uh, you know, the, the cape's not gonna knock it off. Um, so it's on there pretty, pretty good and solid. Now I will say, uh, you may have noticed as I was placing the gun on, that the finish on the back is not as perfect as some other parts. Uh, the back is one of the most challenging parts to get perfect because unlike the helmet and, and the armor pieces, it's not a separate piece. Uh, so you say, may see some like, uh, variants uh, here, uh, especially along the edges, uh, just because it's a piece that has to be masked uh, on the figure. Sometimes you'll get a little issue there. I think it adds to the weathering effect. Uh, I think that uh, it still looks good overall. It shouldn't get worse. Anything like that that, that you see, I have uh, put extra sealer over, uh, so it will stay looking pretty much how it looks when you get it, you know, unless you're really just abusing the figure. Um, but uh, that's the reason for a little bit uh, more variance back there. Just kind of a logistics issue with, with having to mask that off, dealing with a uh, really kind of a three-step finish. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything for these. Uh, I do want to also share uh, two other uh, customs that I'm offering now as well. Uh, so I am not opening any more orders for uh, the full Besker conversion but I am still doing repaints of figures. So those are a little easier for me, uh, just in terms of not having to buy uh, third-party parts and not having to do as much dribbling and cutting and reshaping. Uh, so uh, as a new, uh, newer product on my site, uh, I do have the uh, sort of chapter one, chapter two look uh, repaint. Uh, this is uh, really just adding weathering. Uh, I, like, like the Beskar look, I repaint everything to make it just look a little bit more natural. Uh, so the flight suit is actually repainted. It may look like the same color at first, uh, but it's a slightly more realistic color. Uh, it's also going to have a little bit of a better uh, interaction with light because it's not just a, a um, unpainted plastic. It's an actual opaque coating on the figure. Uh, uh, the armor pieces, uh, some of what you'll see is the stock color coming through. Some is weathered. I match the color of the red uh, and then darken it uh, and, and add that weathering. Uh, and then uh, for the sort of tan pieces, I weather those in gray uh, because the black can look a little bit too cartoonish. Uh, so you'll see there that the wash and weathering is in a dark gray. Uh, and then the sort of like uh, carbon scoring or blaster damage, uh, I highlight that in, in chrome. Uh, and then go around it with a little bit of black or very dark brown, depending on the piece, uh, just to kind of give it that sort of scored, uh, worn look. Uh, and I do that across all the armor, uh, including the back. Uh, the back is a little simpler, uh, but um, the, the overall weathering I do everywhere and, and the blaster effects. Um, the brown on the mid-torso, uh, as well as the gray on the sides, uh, has all been uh, repainted as well. Uh, as well as the tan of the, the sort of vest there on the flight suit. Uh, articulation remains unchanged, uh, so functionally it's the same figure. Uh, now this customer uh, requested to just keep the standard kind of uh, Scarif Shore Trooper looking armor. Uh, on my standard conversions I will swap this out for uh, an interchangeable uh, Besker, Beskar uh, shoulder uh, that uh, will swap on just like my Beskar conversions. Um, I do uh, modify the gun attachment point and then I provide a wired cape as well. So these are available on my website right now, uh, shopotcustoms.com. In addition to the 6 inch repaints, I also do uh, 3.75 inch, the vintage collection repaints. Uh, I will have these live on my site as well. They haven't been there yet, but I'll have them live at the time of this posting. Uh, so this is all the same ideas from the 6 inch version. Uh, the only things that I haven't really changed are the vest uh, and uh, the boots and then the brown portions of the belt. Uh, the, the brown on the, the torso and the, the brown on uh, all of the armor and, and the tan parts of the armor 
uh, has all been uh, either fully repainted or weathered uh, just to, to more accurately match the show. Um, and then I do the repaint on the helmet as well uh, with the same chrome finish. Uh, and this applies for the 6 inch and, and 3.75 inch version. Uh, same chrome finish that you see on uh, the Beskar conversions, uh, but for these I add some tarnish in the creases. Uh, you'll see, uh, it should show up on the video, but if not, I'll, I'll throw some pictures in the, in the video as well. Uh, you'll get this sort of uh, slightly warmer, duller area uh, right within the creases of the helmet uh, on both, um, just to capture that kind of dirty, worn look uh, from the show. Um, and I think he may have had it cleaned up when he gets the new armor because I don't really notice the tarnish on the helmet uh, past uh, the first few episodes. Um, but I think that's an important part of the look for this version of the character. Um, this one has a wired cape as well, um, which really helps you get those dynamic poses. Uh, all of my wired capes, uh, I run one single wire uh, through the front edge across the collar. Uh, I've owned custom capes myself where it's broken up in the front and it makes the wire kind of useless because it wants to just kind of dangle from the shoulders. Uh, so to me it's very important that wire runs the full length of the leading edge uh, so you can get poses and, and it still wants to sit flush at the, uh, at the chest. Um, and then it also helps you sort of pose it how you want in front of the collar. So sometimes in the show he's kind of got it more like over to one side and then a lot of times it'll be like almost like actually think it actually is tucked in behind the armor. Now that's not really an option with these because there's nowhere to, to actually put it behind the armor, but you can get it down as close as possible so it gets that kind of look. But uh, yeah, those are my repaints, uh, both available right now, uh, shopotcustoms.com. As always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. I really like to stay in touch with the community, see what you guys think about my work. Um, and uh, as always, thanks for watching.